Hi, this is Eric with Cat Avenue, and today I'm going to be wrapping up part two of the PDF underlay slash ducting example, I guess you could call it. Um, so in the previous video, I made these construction lines, um, and we're continuing on from that point. So if you're wanting to see part one, see the link underneath. As well, um, to find out more about dim scale, and uh, those sort of things, which I'll be talking about in this video, uh, refer also to the same area in the notes underneath the video. So, um, first things first, I want to check the OSNAP settings, uh, which is right here. So I right click here, go to eSnap settings, and then I want to make sure that I have my midpoint, endpoint, and perpendicular turned on. Intersection is a good one too. But for today, I'm just going to leave that off. So before we start, I wanted to stretch the heating unit over a little bit this way to the left. Um, let me show you how to do that because we're dealing with a PDF that's sort of in the way. Um, but we can get around that pretty easily. Um, so let's first, let me show you what happens when we try to start the PDF by accident. So if we uh, type the stretch command, which is the S command, and then at this point, it's wanting the boundary or the uh, crossing. And the crossing always starts from the lower right to upper left. Um, now, if I begin my crossing here, what will happen is it will select the PDF and uh, put the construction lines behind the PDF. We don't really want that. So let's get out of the uh, stretch command by pressing Escape and then start the stretch command again. And this time we're going to be starting our crossing down here outside of the PDF. And then coming up here, and notice that it's selected the PDF here because it's highlighted. We don't want that, so I'll hold down the shift key and deselect that piece there. So once we've deselected it with the shift key, then we can press enter. And at this point, we just uh, give it the base point, which can be anywhere. Uh, and then we give it the distance, which lets us stretch it uh, three feet over. So I wanted to kind of show you how to do that and how to deal with this PDF underlay for doing certain things. Um, so now that we have that relocated, let's go ahead and start putting in some of the pieces. So, so first we're going to start with uh, putting in a couple of T's here. So we'll select the T here. We can also select it from, I have two menus active here. You'll notice the classic menu here and then the ribbon up here. Um, some will prefer to turn the ribbon off, which you can do. And then some will prefer to have actually both of these active. Um, but um, you can select the T here or you can select it uh, in this menu here. Uh, either way is fine. So let's select the T. And here we have a 12 by 12 by 12 T. And to define the throat lengths, we're going to go come over to these boxes and we're going to make these all six inches. And uh, once we do that, uh, we're going to turn off the length label because we're not going to be annotating this. But uh, make sure that repeat draw is turned on. It makes things a little bit easier. And then we're going to select draw. And we're going to pick the one for the center line here. And we're going to put our first T here. We're going to rotate it around just by moving our cursor around and rotating that in. Now we can do the same with this T here. Again, we're going to rotate it around. We're done with the T's, so we can get out of this now. Um, next, we're going to be doing just the straight piece of duct. And you notice on my options, I have the insulation turned off. And if you go into options here, I also have the draw centers turned off and the repeat draw turned on. The bill of materials is turned on as well. I can turn off my size label if I need and my links. Of course, this is depending on what you want. And we'll select OK. And at this point, it's just drawing a 12 by 12 in. Uh, rectangular, which is over here. Um, we're going to be doing a just a straight run 
here with the width. We have several options here that we can select from. Um, we'll just keep it to the run and then select draw. And then we're just going to put in these pieces here from here to here. I'm just left clicking and then you press enter when you're done. Again, we can do this here, here, and then press enter. The nice thing about the, the run command is if you have a, a turn, it will put the elbow in. So we'll uh, demonstrate that here. So start, starting it here, left clicking, and now let's go over, let's say, 15 feet. So we'll just type in 15 feet, and then we'll press enter to complete that piece here. If you don't press the enter, you're not going to get this last piece in. And the enter command is just telling uh, MetQ that you're done with the run. Uh, so let's put in one more piece up here. We'll make this one run up a little bit further than our construction line. And then we'll press enter. That's a, a little bit too far, but uh, you get the point there. Uh, and then uh, we'll put in this one here again pressing enter each time after uh, we are done so um, so now that all our duck pieces are in we can come in and we can put in the uh, branches so in the branch utility uh, we're defining um, the angle of the branch we can make it 45 if we need the size and the length so Everything looks good here. We're going from a rectangular main to a round branch, what we want. So let's go ahead and select draw, making sure the repeat draw is turned on again. And now this is where the tracking uh, comes in handy. So if I highlight over the endpoint of where I'm referencing that branch from, and then just drag my cursor over, uh, you can see it like a little dash line in there. Well, that's a temporary construction line. Um, so we can use this by looking at the, uh, the little white box there. It's telling us how far we are away from that point. We can kind of gauge how far we want to go over. So in this case, it looks like we want to go over about four feet. So we'll just type in four feet. The size of the main duct is 12. And then that puts our... Uh, and then that puts our branch in there. Uh, let's go down and do one more down here. So in this case, let's uh, select the endpoint here, highlight over, and then come down. And let's go over this way and do one more down here. I'm just going to do a few of these. Um, let's put one down here, highlight over, then kind of project out. See that little construction line there uh, being drawn for us? Um, let's come over five feet. And we'll hit, we'll, uh, hit enter for the one foot piece there. And so we're done with that. Uh, on this one, I'm just going to do a um, come in and do a 45 and show you how to do that. Let's choose a 45 and we'll put it here and then we'll just press enter, rotate it up this way. Now if we need to, I'm going to escape out of that, if we need to move this, we can just select it, press the move command and then move it where we need it. You know, I really should have made these probably a little bit smaller, like six inches. But this is just an example, um, a, a drawing, in order to get you started. Um, so let's put in our diffusers now. So we got the diffuser utility here, and we also have it here. So here we have a rectangular round diffuser with a supply and the duct size is 12 like i said it probably should have been smaller but uh, we got a 24 by 24 everything looks good uh, we got the repeat draw turned on here 
let's use the snap tracking uh, mechanism again. Let's highlight over this briefly, then come up uh, with our construction line. We'll come up, uh, let's say, six feet. And that puts in our diffuser. We can do another one over here. We'll put one, let's see, in, uh, looks like maybe 16 feet over. And let's put another one in. About six feet over. And let's see, down here, I'm using my pan. I'm holding the middle uh, button on my mouse down for that. Let's put in another one here. Come out four feet. And lastly, let's put one in this area here. So um, now that I have that, those in, I can come now back. I'm not going to do the rest of these just to keep this video a little bit on the short side. It looks like I've drawn a, um, a diffuser way out here. Let me just select that and erase it for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this one too, just to keep this video short. So before I start, I need to turn on a... Uh, snap setting here. Let's turn on uh, center and turn off perpendicular here. That's going to allow me to snap to the center of the diffuser. So let's uh, start our flex ducting now. Let's go to duct accessories. And here we can um, change a few things. Make sure that the repeat draw is turned on. I have changed my spacing up a little bit. It was set at 0.2. I'm just making it a little bit wider, just so this isn't drawn so tight. Um, so we're going to um, start here, and then we're going to snap to the center. You can see the little circle, and you can see that's wanting to snap to these first, and that's because I probably should have turned off my endpoint snap, and that's a good example of why you don't need too many things being turned on here. Let's turn off the... So we just got um, midpoint and center turned on. And that's going to make it a little bit easier. Let's come back here. And put the first piece in. Press enter when you're done. I mean, that spacing is a little bit on the big side, but it's this is more of a graphical representation of what we need to do. And we just simply just snap over all these, pressing enter each time we are done. Oh, I should mention that if we did need to turn the flex duct, um, we can do that. Let me just show you a, a good example of that. Copy the branch here. I'm going to copy it over this way. And I'm going to copy the diffuser over as well. The CO command. But in this example, I'm going to put the diffuser kind of over here. So this way, I'm going to show you how to turn the piece here if we need to. So if we go up to the flex duct again, choose draw. Now we just put the first point in here. Again, I'm going to reference it from the center. I'm going to just come back like this. The second point will be here. And then the third point will be here. So that will make the turn for us um, if we need to do that. We can do that multiple turns, right? So we could turn it uh, you know, two or three times if we wanted to. So now that we have all this stuff drawn in, um, let me show you how to create the bill of materials. So we're going to come over to the main duct utility here. Uh, we're going to choose bomb here. And here we can uh, choose what we want to include in the bill of materials. 
I've got no balloons selected here just to uh, keep the video a little bit on the short side. But if this is turned on, then what it will do is it will prompt you for each item or one item of each kind. So one of these two. Um, as well, in this uh, configuration menu, um, it's sort of important because uh, we're able to tell the uh, bill materials to be sent to the drawing or to a file. If you need to uh, send it to a file, that will allow you to um, open it up in Excel so long as it's a, a CSV file. So you have to rename it to a CSV and then open it up. I have a video about that as well you can ask me about. Um, so I just wanted to show you this menu. Um, here we're going to be uh, building it in a downwards direction uh, from top to bottom. So um, I like to have that option turned on. So once we're satisfied with everything here, it's going to start to build the uh, schedule. You can see there. And that's asking us for the um, insertion point of the uh, table. And then it just builds in that schedule uh, as we need. So let's zoom down and just have a look at that. So as you can see, it's, it's uh, itemized all the items that we've used. Um, and the quantity uh, as well. Uh, because we turn the insulation off, we have no values over here. But um, you can get the idea of what it's doing there. Um, now quickly, um, if I wanted to uh, cut this, so I come up here and cut it, and then if I go into my layout tab here, I can paste that into my sheet um, as you can see, it's a little on the a big side, but um, I can reduce this down. Let's scale this down. A scale factor of 0 0.01, uh, which brings it down quite a bit. Let's just see here. It's probably a little on the small side. But you get the idea. I mean, you could scale this up just slightly uh, by uh, maybe 1.2, like so. You could fiddle with that. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how to do that. We have other videos showing that same process. So I can see that I left the construction layer on. I believe that was on layer zero. Have a look at the beginning CAD video link at the bottom of this video. So if we wanted to plot this out at this point, we would type the plot command. Uh, we can preview it here to see what it's going to look like. Um, if we wanted to plot this out in monochrome, we can do that as well. I'll show you how to do that. So uh, we can just select monochrome here and do the preview again. And uh, that completes the uh, the video today and we'll talk to you in the next video.